Once upon a time, in a land far, far away, a beautiful prince was on his way to visit the love of his life. His hair was flowing gently through the breeze. His eyes were shining with happiness. Halfway through his journey, an ugly ogre came out of the bushes and hit the prince off the horse. He landed on his wrist and bam, busted his arm. Son of a... In the emergency room, the doctor said, Thou shall need an x-ray. The confused prince looked the doctor in the eyes and said, X what? And the doctor explained, We will use some magic light to look through your skin and see what happened. So we can try to heal you, my prince. Yeah, magic indeed. X-rays are simply fascinating. But what are x-rays? Why do we frequently use them in medicine? And are they dangerous at all? Before we answer those questions, we need to learn a bit about the science of light. It is important for you to understand some basic concepts regarding the electromagnetic spectrum. As you know, that big ball of fire in the sky that we call the sun is continuously emitting light. And that light can be split into different types of light. The one most relevant to us is visible light because it's how we see the world around us. However, visible light is just one part of the electromagnetic spectrum. You're probably also familiar with ultraviolet, infrared, radio waves, x-rays, microwave, and gamma rays. We use some of those in devices on a daily basis, such as the radio in our cars or when heating a meal in the microwave. But what distinguishes the different types of light energy, otherwise called radiation, on the electromagnetic spectrum? Now the simple answer to this is the frequency of the wave and the wavelength. For example, radio waves have low energy and long wavelengths. This is why your car can receive a radio signal from a tower many miles away. It's also why your car radio cuts out when you travel through a tunnel. The radio waves don't have enough energy to travel through the dense ground and thick walls surrounding the tunnel. As for X-rays, they act similarly to visible light rays, but at wavelengths approximately a thousand times shorter. Even though we stumbled upon X-rays as a result of an accidental discovery, they have provided us with an incredibly vast number of applications that forever changed the world we live in. Now that we know what X-rays are, we need to find out how they work. In 1895, physicist Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen made an accidental discovery. He noticed a glow coming from a nearby chemically coated screen. After conducting a series of experiments, he learned that x-rays could penetrate flesh, but not higher density substances such as bone. Later he discovered that x-rays could be photographed producing black and white images of the inside of the body. But how can you photograph the inside of the human body? How is this image created? Well, the different shades of black and white are a result of how different tissues absorb radiation. For example, bones appear white because the calcium present in bones absorbs the highest amount of x-rays. Soft tissues like fat, skin, and muscle absorb fewer x-rays, so they appear grayer. In chest x-rays, the lungs often appear black because we hold air in our lungs, and air absorbs the least amount of x-rays. Unlike our prince in the beginning of the video, you've probably had an x-ray before, either for a broken bone or just during a visit to the dentist or you've seen it being done on one of your favorite medical series. So you may have an idea of what it looks like. Big machine, doctor tells you to stand still, and you get your picture taken. But let's get a bit more scientific and understand what is actually happening. When you have an x-ray taken, the body part in question will be positioned between an x-ray source and an x-ray detector. This detector is essentially a specialized version of a photographic film. 
Maybe you're not familiar with how film works because you're fully on board with a digital train. So here's a quick recap. A film is covered with an emulsion made up of silver halide crystals. When the film is exposed to light or photons, it causes the crystals to turn into silver ions. The denser the silver ions on the film, the higher the light intensity in the area of the image. With x-rays, something similar is happening. The x-ray source will rapidly fire x-rays at your body part. Let's say it's your hand. The x-ray detector or film will capture these x-rays and develop the image. The more x-rays hit the film, the blacker the image will be because your body did not absorb those x-rays. They just traveled right through you. Just like when I read a hate comment on YouTube. It flies right through me into the blocked bin. Your hand bones will appear white because they did absorb the x-rays. But everything surrounding your bones will appear black or gray. Now, what do we use x-rays for in medicine? If you answer broken bones, you're only partially right. While x-rays are primarily used for imaging broken and fractured bones, they can also be used for a range of other things. Think about all those cases in the news when people end up swallowing the most bizarre items that later turn up on x-rays and social media. ER rooms across the globe have experienced their fair share of coins, dentures, toothbrushes, even a SpongeBob pendant. Oh yeah. Besides providing doctors all over the world with a good laugh, x-rays are actually a very effective tool when it comes to initiating the diagnosis process. Whether we're talking about fluid collections, infections, or even cancer. However, for more complex medical issues, a more extensive look beneath the skin might be needed. This is where CT scans, otherwise called CAT scans, come in. CT scans use rotating x-ray machines to capture different cross-sections of an area. CT scans can accurately image soft tissues in a way that conventional x-rays can't. But this is mostly due to what we call the contrast medium. A contrast medium is a dye that helps soft tissues appear more clearly, and it can either be injected or ingested. They are used when doctors need a more detailed view of the body structures. For example, in the case of traumatic injury when a doctor needs to assess the extent of tissue damage. Are x-rays dangerous at all? Should you be afraid of getting one? Again, if you've ever had an x-ray or even seen one done on TV, then you're probably familiar with the process. The radiographer says to the patient, don't worry, x-rays aren't dangerous. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to stand behind this protective screen, okay? Well, this can be alarming for some people. I get it. After all, if x-rays aren't dangerous, why does the radiographer need to get out of the way? What's going on here? There's a popular phrase that goes, the dose makes the poison. But simply, this means that all things can be harmful in large enough quantities. For example, a small amount of paracetamol might relieve your pain and be good for you. But a large amount can cause serious injury. It works similarly for x-rays. It is okay for you to have infrequent x-rays taken. But radiographers would be exposing themselves to potentially dangerous levels of radiation if they stood in the firing line of x-rays day after day. But exactly how dangerous are x-rays? X-rays are a form of radiation and a lot of types of radiation can be risky. However, you shouldn't be afraid to have an x-ray taken in a medical setting and here's why. We are exposed to radiation all day, every day. The rocks you walk past emit radiation. The radioactive gas radon is all around us. And the sun is constantly bombarding us with cosmic rays from outer space. We call all of this background radiation. The average annual dose of radiation per person in the US is 6.2 millisieverts. 
This accounts for background radiation and human-made sources. Note that that number can vary depending on where you live. To put this into perspective, one chest x-ray is equivalent to around 10 days of natural background radiation. So if you're ever worried about getting an x-ray, just remember that leaving your injury untreated is more dangerous to you than a small amount of radiation. Similarly, please do not expect gaining some sort of power or turning into a superhero after having an x-ray. That is impossible to happen. At least as far as we know. Speaking of superheroes, I'm curious to find out what kind of superpower would you like to have? Let me know in the comments below. Tell me if you enjoyed this video by smashing the like button and subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss the next upload. I'll see you in the next video.